think it's, I mean, like I said before, it's both civil and criminal. I think that there's much needed public policy advocacy in the attorney general's office for criminal justice um, legislation, policy, the setting of those types of things. You know, people have to remember that Cal DOJ, the, DO, uh, the attorney general's office is also the statewide um, leader of, of the crime labs across California. I think there's at least a dozen of them. I've, I've worked within them. I've known them. I look forward to the day when um, it's a great crime lab that we even advance it even farther in, into some of the types of things that we've done here locally in Sacramento, like we did on the Golden State Killer, like we did on the Ricky Davis, which was an exoneration of an individual that was convicted out of El Dorado County. I look forward to that. I look forward to becoming um, the statewide leader on more of this EDD kind of stuff, because we haven't seen that in the office, even though it's a massive statewide issue. Um, and then obviously on the civil side, um, I look forward to making sure that we're holding, you know, companies accountable for bad behavior, people that harm the environment are held accountable for polluting our waterways and those types of things. But there, there's much work to be done, um, but I definitely feel very comfortable in, in filling that role. You know, obviously the, the capture of the Golden and prosecution of the Golden State Killer is one of your major achievements in the last few years. And kind of what you just attributed to that was, you know, a successful DNA lab. Kind of, um, you know, the state labs, you know, a, you know, uh, you know help other counties who don't have Absolutely. those great resources. Kind of what, right. what kind of the, you know, the technical things that you've learned in the Sacramento labs do you think that you can bring to help kind of the state of California update its procedures? Because it's not only, you know, DNA, it's, it's right. you know, firearms and so forth. Right. It has, you know, Absolutely. Backlog in this area. Well, I mean, I, you know, I've known the folk, many of the folks from the Cal DOJ labs for many, many years because of the work that I've done. Um, they're very good, hardworking people. You know, much of much of what's needed is resources and prioritization that that we're going to we're going to consider these things important. So, for instance, you have thousands and thousands of people um, within what they call their missing persons database. So they people went missing. We don't know who they are and we wanna figure out who they are and so we can tell their loved ones. Um, we have lots and lots of cold cases that are unsolved. We have what's called post-conviction opportunities. So if somebody like the Innocence Project comes to us and says, we want you to do some DNA on this work. So expanding those capabilities. But again, like you say, Jared, it's it's also about firearms. It's about trace evidence. It's about you know this prohibited, you know, armed persons prohibited database, which is it seems to have some, some challenges that needs to be updated. So. Um, but a lot of it is about priorities and it's also about funding. So um, I understand the need. I believe 100% that forensic science is the greatest tool ever given to law enforcement to find the truth, no matter what that truth is. And we should be willing to dedicate as much of our resources as possible to that. I guess that's an, that's an interesting point is, is forensic evidence not only can help prosecute someone, but it can help exonerate someone. Um, you know, right. Oh. Sorry, Anne-Marie, your feed just froze a little bit. Sorry, okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Let me go I, to my other. Or can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Is that hear better? You. You're good now. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll just uh, start from the top there. You know, one of the great points you just brought up is, is that forensic evidence can not only help prosecute someone, but it can help exonerate someone. Um, and so kind of a lot of these justice groups are, are kind of a, a opposed to funding in these areas. Um, but however, it could be used to the benefit to exonerate some people. And how is your experience in, in your work with some of these folks and kind of using DNA to, to help exonerate people who have been found guilty? Well, I mean, let's, you know, the most important thing, especially about DNA is it, it, it is, it, it just simply tells, you know, whether you're, it identifies the guilty, exonerates the innocence. Probably one of my proudest moments as a prosecutor, obviously Golden State Killer is a big deal, but we were also asked by another county to help with a case called the Ricky Davis case. And Ricky Davis was convicted in El Dorado County for a murder and he had claimed his innocence. And so the Innocence Project came to our lab because we have a very um, well-known lab and very good lab. And they asked us to do the DNA testing to see, you know, could, is Ricky Davis really the actual person? And ultimately through all that work, Ricky Davis was exonerated and now somebody else has been identified and is now pending those charges. So I look at these tools, you know, it, DNA is what it is. It, 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 it has the ability to identify and it has the ability to exonerate. We as all Californians should be um, very uh, willing and, and interested in using that tool to the best of our ability because it, it is the greatest tool ever given to find that truth. No matter where it goes, we should just be willing to follow wherever that leads us.